Okay, so we have our toilet flange right here. And this is an old one. If you have new construction, then obviously this would be just ABS black plastic. This is actually the old flange from the original home build. But of course my tile job all around it is brand new as with my Ditra waterproof membrane underneath it. Definitely watch the channel and the videos for that process. So the toilet gave me a whole entire little product packaging here. Now if you did not buy a new toilet and you're just reinstalling the old one, you're gonna have to get a new wax ring and they actually come in different sizes. So here's the one that came with my brand new toilet. But let me show you something here. So when you do your tile or vinyl floor, whatever you're doing, your installation, right here, we're looking at a tiny bit of a lip. Over here, it's completely flush. And over there on that side, completely flush or maybe raised up just a little bit. Because I have a little bit of a lip right here, in the perfect world, you want it about a quarter inch, you want the flange a quarter inch above your vinyl flooring or tile. Because I'm a little bit up right here and pretty much even right here. Because I'm not sunken down, I could probably get away with using a regular size wax ring. But because I'm not completely even, I'm not gonna take any chances and I'm gonna be using a jumbo reinforced wax ring and they don't cost very much, and it's just, in my personal opinion, worth the extra peace of mind. So, if you need a new hardware, they also come with one with has hardware as well. It's the same exact thing, but this one comes with hardware. I don't need this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and return that one. Just use this, because again, my new toilet came with this here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna clean off, if you have an old flange, you're gonna clean it off to the best of your ability, just so there's no huge chunks that are gonna get in the way of the new wax seal compressing down. If it's brand new, no need to clean it off. Then you're gonna take your little bolts, slip them through the big side here first, and then all the way to the edge on each side, and then wing these little like wing nuts down, hand tighten those down so they're not going anywhere. Nice and tight, each one. And I'll have these wax rings linked in the description box right below the video. And this one as well if you need the hardware included with it. All right, so let me go ahead and show you this real briefly here. Here's the jumbo compared to the regular size one. As you can see, just the wrapper is larger. Not too much larger, but definitely noticeable larger, as we can see right here. So it just gives you a little extra compression down there especially, like I mentioned already, if your flange is below your tile or vinyl flooring. They also make a flange extender as well. And I'll try to link the flange extender in the description box as well, if you wanna go that route. It just like sits on top and then, so some people for the next steps with the wax ring, some people actually put it down first and then set the toilet down. But according to my directions for my toilet, they actually want me to flip over my toilet, stick the wax ring on, and then lower it down. So this rubber portion right here, so this little plastic portion right here that's kind of facing up here, that side is actually gonna go into the sewer this way here. And according to the directions on the wax ring, it actually says to do it that way. So I'm gonna go with the easier way instead of having to flip over the toilet and all that nonsense. All right, so all we're gonna do here, there was like a little rip in the thing here, and we're gonna take the wax ring out of this little packaging here. And when you are installing the bolts, definitely don't get anything down your sewer that you don't need down your sewer. And if anything flakes up on you while you're removing that plastic, you can kind of just pat it back down a little bit. All right, so once again, this side right here faces up, plastic side right here faces down into the tube here, into my sewer pipe. And I wanna get that nice and spaced evenly. Looking fantastic right there. Okay, now here is the next step, which we have to be super careful about. And if you have a helper, absolutely get your helper to do this. I'm gonna be doing this just by myself, but you need to pick up the toilet, and set the toilet evenly with your pressure. Don't be putting pressure on the back end, don't be putting pressure on the front end or one side. 
You don't want to smash this wax ring down unevenly. You want to put an even weight right on top of your two bolts, setting it in place, and the weight of the toilet will compress this wax ring straight down, and that's what we want, nice evenly compression down. Before I do set the new toilet back into place, I'm just gonna grab an adjustable wrench and I'm just gonna tighten these things the best of my ability. There's nothing really to latch on to, but it will turn. And I'm just gonna give it a few turns because what I don't want is I don't want these potentially coming loose later down the road because then if you have to re-tighten these and lift back up your toilet, then you have to get a new, whole new wax ring and clean off the wax ring. So let's go ahead and just tighten these a little bit. And since this isn't smashed down, it's probably easier if I just remove this whole thing. Protective. All right, wax ring back into place. Adjust it nice and evenly between the two bolts. I'm making sure we got a straight shot down our sewer pipe. Okay, let's move the tripod out of the way. Pick up some of this trash. Get ready to drop this toilet in. Before I do drop it in though, I need to shut off the water to the house and redo this connection with a new PEX connection and also spray paint that satin black. That's a split flange to cover up my tiling and a little bit of silicone right there. And this little piece of silicone right here is below the flange not to interrupt with the wax seal. I just put a little bit in there instead of grout. There was a little bit larger of a chunk right there. Obviously the toilet's gonna cover that up. Okay. And what's nice also about tightening down those a little bit more is you don't want those coming loose. You want them nice and tight so when you set your bowl down, you're not getting any wiggle waggle going on here. What's nice about a brand new toilet is minus the tank, minus water. It's still like probably 70 pounds, maybe ballpark, not exactly sure. Again, it's going to be easier than with the tank on there and all that other nonsense. Okay, so I'm gonna try not to block your shot. I might have to move you here. I'm gonna get you as close as I can there so you can at least get a side shot. I'm just gonna literally step right in front of you here while I do it. So with this American Standard toilet, eh, nah, it's probably like 50 pounds. Uh, underneath here is the easiest thing to do. But again, we wanna put it nice and flat. So we're gonna go ahead and get my bolts on before we do compress it. Okay, I'm lined up. Before I go down, I want to see the levelness of the toilet, that I'm not like way over to the left or right. My bolts are right there looking good, about evenly spaced. And I'm gonna go ahead and set it right on there like that. Okay, so now the weight of the toilet is on the wax ring, but what we want to do is I'm gonna use my body weight and I wanna push down evenly. I don't wanna rock it back and forth, but I wanna go flat and beautiful. And directions say the very, they don't want you rocking it, don't rock it, but directions on the wax ring actually want you to slightly twist just a little bit. I'm not gonna do this too much, but I'm gonna twist just a little bit to really seat that wax ring in there. And then, before you're done making sure that your toilet is straight. You don't want a dingle dangle looking toilet, I'll tell you what. So we're looking absolutely fantastic there. And you'll know it's compressed all the way down when the bottom of your toilet is laying flat against your tile. And I barely used any body weight pushing it straight down. So I'm really stoked on that. And even though the water is shut off, I haven't dealt with that like I just said I was gonna do because I didn't want to cut it until I know the proper size of my PEX extension. I'm gonna have a white PEX tube coming up. Typically yours would be out the back of the toilet, but I do have an outlet back there for my heated bidet toilet seat. So that's looking absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the provided little nuts. I'm gonna tighten that down to the ground on each side. 
Then we'll start piecing this toilet back in. And then tightening these down right here, I just used both sides evenly. So I just reached around this side with my right hand, obviously this side with my left hand, did them evenly so it sinks down even further and tightens up evenly. And now we put on our little decorative caps right on top like that. And if I haven't made it clear, this is an American standard toilet and I will be doing a full review, unfortunately, they must have tested it out a little bit and then a little bit of dog hair in there from my puppy. But that will clean out. I think they just tested it in the factory. All right, let's continue to piece this together. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be right back to the video, but I do wanna thank today's sponsor, which is Manscaped. They have just come out with their lawnmower 5.0 and this is the Platinum Package 5.0 Ultra. What you get is beautifulness all in one beautiful bundle right here. Let's start on this side here. They give you a body buffer right here. This is really nice. I have one in my shower right now. You put your body wash on there and you scrub away. That is included. You also get deodorant, which I also use. You get their body wash and you get their shampoo and conditioner two in one as well. Again, I use their body wash every shower. I use their deodorant. I use their body buffer. These are products that I use. Depends on when you're watching this, this is a great gift idea, and I'm actually gonna be re-gifting this to someone in the friends and family circle. So, after all we just saw, of course, because this is the Platinum Package 5.0, Ultra, you get yourself, let's go ahead and start over here. You get your Crop Soother, you get right here, your Crop Preserver, you get your Weed Whacker 2.0. This is an ear and nose hair trimmer. I actually just used mine today, matter of fact. They were getting a little bit long, TMI, but that's what it is used for. You got your little brochure right here, and of course, your brand spanking new Lawnmower 5.0. I have a full review video on this already on the channel. And what makes this one different is again, this is the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra trimmer. You get your very short hair accessory for the top of your Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. We're not done quite yet, ladies and gentlemen. Underneath, you have your provided travel bag. Great for your overnight trips. You got your charger for both the Weed Whacker and the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, as well as your accessories, trimming guides in here as well. We are still not done quite yet. You also have some literature and they also do give you a cool little like newspaper. You could put that down for your first use, trim up and then chuck that in the trash after you're done. But they also give you a pair of their brand new Boxers 2.0, which I have many pairs of these already. Super soft premium boxers. These are in the black color right here. And these are a size too big, or I take these out of the package and keep them and then re-gift the rest, but those are size large. And so I'll go ahead and gift these out as well. You're like, Chris, that's a pretty sweet little package deal. I totally agree with you. If you wanna get 20% off and free shipping on this package or any other other packages, or you can buy these things solo if you want, if you wanna get 20% off and free shipping, Top link in the description box below will be my direct link. Use that link, you're gonna head over to their website and the 20% off and free shipping will automatically be applied with that link. Grab your gifts, grab it for yourself. They're great products, they do a great job. You'll thoroughly enjoy them. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the project. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside the box here. I already did take a quick little peek and it looks like they packed it up really nicely. You got a... Uh, Couple brochures here, some thank yous, how to use your remote control, that's laminated, and then some directions there. And we have a lot of connections and all sorts of stuff here. We got our remote control, our water supply, remote control batteries, looks, looks like three double A's, and of course, our toilet seat right here. Okay, right off the bat, it's looking real nice. The only thing I am seeing, and it's so slight, right here in the very middle back portion. You can't really even see it on camera. There's a little punch, as in you're not gonna notice, no one's gonna notice that. And you might be able to even like just kind of work it, kind of push it out, but it looks like something kind of jammed the area here. And I'm just seeing it in the sun, if you can see it right there. But overall, it looks like it's in good condition. To make your installation a little bit easier on you, uh, you do have your little T-valve here, so right here. And another reviewer actually stated in their review, it might have been an older one, this is an American Standard Toilet, and she said that her T-valve threading 
couldn't fit on an American standard, but this is an American standard. This is a brand new toilet, like I mentioned, and the T-nut fits perfectly fine. And then what this is gonna do, this is gonna connect down to, obviously, my line, which is gonna connect to my PEX connection, which I still have to PEX in a connection because this is a brand new remodel here. Your water connection is probably coming out the back of your wall there. I purposely hid my outlet behind the toilet, so you're not gonna be able to see it. It's literally right behind. And then I'm gonna cord management. And the line that the bidet did come with is super long. And these, these ones are not very flexible at all. So this one's gonna go straight down from my T to my water supply, which is gonna be connected here, like I said. And that's what I have right here, a little quarter turn. And then this, I'm gonna cord management up like this in a small little loop, and then probably grab a white zip tie and zip tie it so it stays in this position right here. Very clean. If you didn't want that, you could go to a hardware store and try to buy like a very small one or a smaller one than this so there's not as big of a loop, but I don't think anyone's gonna notice that. And so then that line screws onto that portion. And these do have O-rings in here. I will be testing that out. If I do get any leaks, I will go ahead and use plumber's tape. This one, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up with a wrench, but not too much because the manufacturer actually wants you to just hand tighten that if you have a connection like this. But since this is a metal connection, I'll go ahead and just do it nice and snug up there, making sure there's no leaks. There is an O-ring inside of this right here. Again, there is another O-ring inside this, just like we see right here. So I don't think I'm gonna need plumber's tape for the male portion underneath here, just like it is here. I won't use any because this one has an O-ring just like this. But again, if you do get any leaks, turn off your water, remove it, and put on your plumber's tape, Teflon tape. Okay, next portion of the install here. These things weren't the easiest to get in right here. And what it is, it's this like elongated, you can see it right there, hopefully. It's a elongated washer that has some threads at the very bottom. And that again was a little bit of a squeeze to get in there. And then they do give you a template for a elongated or a round one there. I've determined that I need my bracket pushed back pretty far right there. And then these little brackets go in here like this here. And then you have your bolt with your washer. And again, that screws down because the bottom of this right here has threads as we can see there. That's why it's always good to read the directions here. Because I have this type of toilet right here, you follow the directions on the left-hand side here. Ignore the insert rubber nut, etc. unless you have a toilet that looks like this. Again, mine looks like this. So I'm gonna be using this installation kit that it comes with, as well, of course, with these brackets right here. Like this here, with your plastic squares going through the bracket, and then your little white, I'm gonna call it like a rubber gasket, and then your little itty bitty plastic washer to hold that in place, and then your little twist on screw in right here. Again, for this type of toilet right here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are all hooked up here, and I do wanna state something just for a second here. So your little bracket right here obviously gets screwed down like the direction state and then you slip your bidet into the bracket, you hear a click and then it's nice and sturdy. Well, I was having trouble when I was tightening it. I think it was flexing that bracket because it's plastic and it just wasn't sitting in the seat properly to be able to slide it in. So what I did, Loosen all my things back up, slid the plastic bracket in first where I still had access to the holes, dropped in my washer, my plastic nut, my washers, etc. below, tightened it, then slipped it back and it clicked into place and it was just a lot easier. I was kind of fighting with that for about 15 minutes or so. No need for any Teflon tape. Water is on, I have flushed it, no leaks regarding any of the connections that came with the bidet. I did, again, tighten this one right here with an adjustable wrench, but don't overdo it. Just nice and, uh, you know, give it a good, a good turn to it, but, you know, don't break off that plastic piece that it connects to that goes above the toilet here. And then, again, my connection, which doesn't include, doesn't come with it, but that's your water connection down to my PEX. Uh, and then this connection here, no need for plumber's tape there either because it has the little O-ring in there. And then I'll slightly bend this one back and put some sort of like maybe little zip tie or something like that 
if it bugs me, the only reason why I would do that just to straighten up this shot right here to make it look, look a little bit more in line and it won't bend it like that. I'm just kind of compressing this together right here. Because if I let that go, then you just kind of have this little wanky dinky thing come, on, come off the side. Totally up to you. But obviously now it has to function. So I'm gonna obviously do that off camera. But before I do show you that, let me show you. Soft closed lid. And I threw that thing down pretty easily. Now this top is plastic. Uh, the seat is plastic, but it's harder plastic. And let me show you here. So let me throw that down. Nice. So the kids are definitely not going to be able to slam that lid. Let me give you a little side profile here. It is a good design. It's not the thinnest design and it kind of slopes down a little bit. But when you raise the toilet lid up, obviously that is nice and flat. As you can see, it kind of dives down in the back there for a nice flat look to it because obviously it does need to hold water, it does need to blow air, it does need to heat. That's why it's a little bit thicker in the rear. There's the directions. The directions do state um, if you need to mess around with the water level to mess around with it, but I didn't have to do anything and it stopped right about where the instructions say to have the water stop, right here at the float cup right here as it goes along. So no need to do anything. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on. The only thing I'm probably gonna upgrade is this. This is just kind of chromed plastic uh, handle here. So I'll probably upgrade that to a nice uh, matte black metal one to match my full remodel. Uh, same kind of fixtures as I have here. Tile, handles, etc. But let me go ahead and show you how this bad boy flushes. Let me go ahead and lift up my lid. Again, this is not the lid that comes with it. That is a bidet. But check this out. Look at how fast this is. Nice. One flush. Looking real good. As it refills, I'm going to be quiet here. Nice and quiet. Even without the lid on. Nice and quiet as it refills. Flushing is very quick and to the point. Both of the lids are anti-slam lids. Anyway, loving the toilet, and it's actually a compact design, and it would look obviously a lot more compact without this bidet. Okay, now the, that last little bit, as it's kind of filling up, obviously that sound would go away a little bit without the top on, but definitely a clean, brand new toilet. And this is white, by the way, with a rounded seat. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have installed it. I have done all my connections, but after I installed the toilet, checked for leaks, everything is good to go. The toilet looks really beautiful, very sturdy, flush is strong. Obviously, still need to put the top on. And then the last thing to do, this is totally optional, it's up to you. I have black tile. There is a little bit of a gap. There's about an eighth of an inch gap right here, maybe quarter inch. Can't really see it only in the very front. What most people do, and that's just the slope, not precisely square. So a couple options you can do, leave it, which I might leave it, or what most people do is they just use some bath sealant. They leave the back open, meaning that don't seal it all the way around just in case there is a leak. You can find a leak because it's not sealed inside, rotting out your subfloor, etc. And then they start the uh, sealant and they go all the way around and then again, leaving a nice gap in the back if it does leak. Uh, but with the tile and the grout, it's just, it's, you can do it. You can make a clean line. I have a clean line down there. I just don't like the way it looks on black tile and I couldn't find any bath and kitchen black sealant for some oddball reason. It's out there. I'll probably have to go online and see it. Or I just might do this front gap and try to get it the best possible way possible. But anyway, letting you know about that is most people do for a cleaner look. But if it doesn't bug you, just leave it. Here's a closer up shot of what the white on the black looks like. Again, fades a little bit into the grout line. Not bad. I do have to fix that back part a little bit. You can see it's not as straight back there. Most people don't care. If you have a little bit of OCD, that might bug you.